Hello and welcome to Bay One. This is Jafel Maraxi, and today I'm bringing you the introduction to Robocraft Part Four. Uh, and in this episode, we're actually going to do a quick overview of hovercraft and ways uh, that they work. Uh, so the first thing is that I've already built a base here. I'm just going to get four of the blades, attach them here. And this is, you can build it with three, like you could have two of the blades at the front and one attached on the back here, and it would still be stable, but the front would ride up a lot higher, so um, you really need a minimum of four for an actual stable platform. So let's just attach a gun to the bottom of this. And there it is, that's really your most basic hovercraft that you can create. Um, let's go into the test zone and see how that works. And use space to go up, shift to go down. And it's not a bad vehicle, but as you can see, it's a little bit slow. And this is actually a limit of the way hovercraft and the hover blades actually work. Um, go in front and back they actually apply a braking force if you try to go over their speed limit so even with thrusters you're, you can't go faster than the blades allow but there is actually a way to get around that because uh, the blades are not limited in speed when you go in up or down uh, so let's go back to the bay and I'll show you how that works Yeah, you may have also noticed the game looks a little bit different. That's because of uh, a patch that was released today, which it aims to optimize the game to support um, more blocks. So you can have the mega bots with 50,000 or more blocks on them. Uh, so they're still working on improvements for that. Um, but what I'm going to do here is um, instead of building the hovercraft from front to back, uh, we need to build it um, up to down, so the up becomes the front and the down there becomes the back. Uh, the only challenge with this is the by using the hover blades in this fashion, you actually can't use them for turning. Uh, so there's some you need to use thrusters to actually get around this. Uh, so let's put let's move those ones down one. But this also means that you end up with a vehicle that is a lot, lot faster. Um, oh, that's because I've got those there. Let's move these back. Uh, so now to deal with the issue with not being able to turn, uh, we're going to actually need to attach thrusters to the front of the vehicle here and so as this is the front the thrusters need to be here um, if I was to try and put the thrusters behind the pilot seat they would actually turn in the opposite direction to the way I need them to so I need to put them in front of the pilot seat here so let's go and get a couple of thrusters um, I actually stripped this off the other uh, vehicle that I built in part three uh, so this is really the basics that you need for this uh, particular design to work. So let's go into the test zone. Now if it's built correctly it should fall over and the fifth blade at the well the top or the front is what will actually keep you uh, oriented at the right angle. Uh, otherwise it has a tendency to try and nosedive. So when I now press the forward key, um, I kind of anchor myself to the ground, which is annoying. So space to get some height first and then go forward. And you can already see it's a lot faster. So it's this version of it's a little bit finicky, uh, but the top speed of it, it kind of makes the other hovercraft look ridiculously slow. And it is. Uh, this is going to be one of the fastest vehicles you can actually build for a T1. So um, it's a little bit um, awkward to control at the moment. So let's go ahead and put some more thrusters on this. So let's exit out. And 
and okay so I need thrusters at the back of the vehicle uh, so what happens if I put the thrusters here uh, let's find out now remember that because these are in front of the actual pilot seat uh, they're actually going to try and turn you um, essentially they're going to try and tilt you so if I try to put them in front of the seat at the bottom there you'll see what happens instead of turning they'll actually make you strafe which could be a nice feature if I could actually find a way to make use of it but it makes turning not work too well so to fix that you actually need the rear thrusters to be located behind the pilot seat so let's exit out of there let's dump those blocks and back into test and now let's go up and you can see there's a lot more control available so let's go forwards And there you go, effectively you've got a bot uh, which can get to the enemy cap zone in about 20 seconds on this map. Uh, on the new ice map, um, speed is actually going to be a lot more important. So this I think would be a great help for anyone starting out. Um, let's actually make it a little bit more functional and add some weapons and let's try it in actual combat. So let's skip out. So first thing, let's get front guns. We need a minimum of five to make the most out of the rate of fire. So let's have one there. Um, let's put the others in the locations where they can kind of shield the pilot seat. Don't need that. And there you go. Uh, that's our five guns, and it's going to be a little bit of a wait before we um, can actually get into battle. So what I'm going to do is. Um, just do some a little bit of weight optimization by swapping out these for other sized cubes which have about half the mass so and the same for these ones Uh, this just means that because the robot's actually lighter, uh, it's going to be a lot quicker to accelerate. So let's enter into battle. And I've accidentally made myself a tier 2. Uh, okay. Well, that's because of all the guns. And let's wait for it to self right. There we go. And let's head for the enemy base. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit weird with this design. If you get the front angled down behind uh, the rear then you'll actually end up going backwards when you press forwards so uh, that's one of the caveats here um, but providing you can keep that under control yeah we're already at the enemy base here and this is going to frustrate them to no end I'm only going to stay here for the first cap zone because no doubt there will be people coming back to 
try and defend, but that's part of the... Oh, let's get out of there. We're being attacked. Actually, let's just fight back. And I died. Yeah, it's a relatively weak bot, but you can see the entire concept of that. It gets a lot more speed out of the same uh, amount of materials. Uh, just to knock that back down to tier 1, we could leave it with 4 guns. Um, and just put one of those at the bottom. Move one of those down. But then you also sacrifice on the maximum amount of firepower you can have. But um, yeah, it's a very fast bot. You put some more armor on there, it'll be a lot more survivable. And if you need to add more support, you just buy another couple of hover blades, put them in the middle here. And they'll actually also act as a form of armor as well. So, uh, but anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. That was my introduction to hovercraft and to how to make ridiculously fast vehicles and uh, come back for the next one. Um, in number five, I'll actually get into flying vehicles. So uh, thank you for watching, and please subscribe. Yeah, up in the corner there. Okay, goodbye.